Let's get it. Mike Semper VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates like the Mightier 1090, KMAV, and 99 KMSR podcast, replay on Sirius XM, or maybe your video streaming on Twitch or YouTube, however you're joining me today. Just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside. And if not, I hope it's sunny inside your mind. A beautiful day here on Del Marva, where I'm at. It's a lovely weekend if you're a wrestling fan as well. It's Friday on the program. You'll notice there's no Brian Alvarez. It's becoming a thing with him, isn't it? Yeah, well. This time, though, instead of visiting his children's school, he'll be visiting all of you who decide to join him and Dave Meltzer and Denise Salcedo and plenty of other people in Las Vegas for the big F4W annual convention. Details of that are available on the front page at WrestlingObserver.com. And the reason that the convention takes place on Memorial Day weekend in Las Vegas is because AEW Double or Nothing takes place this weekend in Las Vegas. But it's not the only thing going on. As I said, it is a bunch of stuff that is happening. I'm going to try to get through as much of it as I can. Some previews, some predictions. We got... WWE SmackDown tonight, which was taped last Friday. AEW Rampage, which was taped on Wednesday. Impact Under Siege, which is live for the Impact Plus subscribers. Then tomorrow you have Stardom, which is taking place early on uh, about 3.30 in the morning Eastern time is when that begins. It's their offering a pay-per-view. Then you have WWE Clash of Champions. And then on Sunday, you have not only Double or Nothing, but NXT Battleground and the finals of the New Japan Best of the Super Juniors. And you know what else? You say you don't like any of that. You like Lucha. Well, it's Friday. So CMLL's got their show from Arena Mexico, too. You can't escape it this weekend. It's a good one if you're a fan. We'll get into as much as I can is when we come back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. You know, we do this show, Wrestling Observer Live, every single day. But if you want us 24-7, you can try to find us on Twitter and Instagram. I am at SemperVivi on both. On Twitter, Brian is at Brian Alvarez. The timeline for this show is at WONF4W. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is at Jim Valley. And he'll be with you here live tomorrow, Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we're not here on Monday, so Brian and I will be back live with you this coming Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So get into a little more of that later on. But I, I guess I'll start one thing that is not related to all of this weekend's activities. I guess just not directly here is CM Punk and... As, as many of you know, I have asked one question about this situation, and it's not when will CM Punk and Brian Alvarez actually fight. No offense to CM Punk, but if we're just going off of jiu-jitsu skills, eh, you know, I got to go with boss man on that one. Um, you know, actually going with, uh, with, with punching skills, uh, nah, it shouldn't do all that. But you know what? The one question I had, you know, leading into the collision announcement was, was CM Punk or Ace Steel actually told or led to believe that Ace Steel would be allowed at collision? And did that change late in the game? You know, what was the deal here? Were they being disingenuous about it? Was Punk just trying to pull a power play and he just done gone banana? Like, what was the deal there? That was my only real question about that. And... There were people implying the latter, I guess, off of reputation or perceived reputation with CM Punk. I don't know, but I guess I got the answer. I say I guess I got the answer because, you know, we're on month number eight now of Brawl Out Fallout. So in today's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer wrote that Steele was rehired some time back, which was unknown within the company, except for very few. And the few that did know were told he would not be at any live events, but Punk and Steele were not aware of that. So, 
Uh, maybe I guess that's going to be it. I, I think I speak for a lot of people here where, yeah, I hope that's it for this story too, forever, for good. If it's sealed with NDAs and all that stuff, leave them shut. I don't care. I just don't care anymore. I just want to see the wrestling. And who knows, maybe this all works out at the end of the day as a plus for everybody. You know, I like to look for that silver lining wherever I can find it. And the bottom line is AEW got a new TV deal that David Zasloff and WBD wanted them to have because they like the programming for the price. So they're getting two hours on Saturday knowing damn well that you got to face college football all fall and winter long. When you got to face the NFL once college football is over with, when you got to deal with big NBA games when they get cranking, you know, in the springtime and the the push to the Stanley Cup and the NBA Finals, you know, spring always is. You know, those ratings aren't going to bother you really in October, November, December. Where they're going to bother you is well, right now, in the lead up to the playoffs. So they got to know all that is is competition, let alone fights and wwe and whatever else is happening in the world so it's interesting there but they're getting a lot of money and you got two sides that get to work two separate shows and not have to deal with each other and there'll surely be liaisons between both brian danielson's a great person to be that you know, a fantastic person to be that and all of the names that seem to be announced for collision when you look at the and i joked about being the island of misfit toys last week because you got andrade and you got thunder rosa and you'd have cm punk on there but you know you throw on the the, the blackpool combat club coming in because they can do whatever they want Give me Stokely Hathaway away from being a manager and in a position of authority on that show. I don't know if the tweet he put up there, re reorganizing Tony Khan's office, pulling down pictures of, of Tony Khan and putting up wonderful pictures of, you know, little Kim and, and such. If he's going to be a part of that show, I think that's fantastic. You know, I'm not sure who else could. Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. I think for a lot of people out there, they are very polarizing. Obviously, I'm in the tank for both of them. Always have been. Brian is. Plenty of you in this chat I know are not. Plenty of you listening I know are not. You probably don't want them on Dynamite, mixing it up with your favorites. Put them over there. I think that would be great. Because then you could bounce them around, bring them back when you need to. You know, I don't know if, if Sanjay's got anything to do with Ring of Honor or not, but Ring of Honor probably is going to be taped alongside Collision. It only makes sense to do that. Dynamite and Rampage together, Collision and ROH together. Things could work out very nicely, really for everybody involved, I guess, until they get to a pay-per-view event and keep the buses and the trailers away from each other, I guess, in that case. But AEW Double or Nothing is, is coming up on Sunday. I guess this is, for many people, the most notable show of the weekend. I guess it just comes down to where you are on Night of Champions as an event and where you are on the bloodline and Roman Reigns and having the interest and him mixing it up for the tag team titles. But, you know, it's not going to do as well this year when it comes to the gate. We know that double or nothing. It was a $1.1 million gate last year. I believe it was their biggest gate at the time that it happened. You had uh, Adam Cole, or I'm sorry, you had uh, Hangman Adam Page and CM Punk. You had all the stuff going around. And look, we have reached a year, you know, from when the wheels, to me, I don't want to say really started to fall off, but I just go back to MJF and the was it a work? Was it a shoot? Was he upset? Did he leave town? Did he get a raise? All that nonsense. I think it was nonsense. Felt like nonsense. Even if it wasn't nonsense, as far as I'm concerned, it was nonsense. We're on a year of that now. And unfortunately, things have not gone well for AEW in a lot of different ways. Their, their TV audience is obviously atrophied. I don't think that's going to matter when it comes to this buy rate whatsoever. I think the one last year did like 150 a thousand or something like that i'm not sure exactly what the final number of was it of it was 
I know it got a lot of late buys. That was one of the things about being a long, long show last year, a very long show last year, was because Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals was taking place, and they got a bunch of buys at the end, but they don't have any of that to worry about. The only thing they have to worry about is NXT being available on Peacock, but I have a feeling that AEW fans can handle having a split screen up there, and they're not going to miss too much off of Double or Nothing, but... Big card, I'll just start it off with the Blackjack Battle Royal, which Blackjack is 21. But apparently, Tony Khan has been very influenced. He's been influenced by ECW. He's been influenced by WCW. You know, you're always influenced by the stuff you watched growing up. And apparently, he watched Heroes of Wrestling with a very inebriated... I guess would be a nice way to put it. Jake the Snake Roberts, who asked if a woman wanted to play 22. There's 22 people in this battle royal. Unless Orange Cassidy, and I'm serious about this, Big Bill, Lee Moriarty, Jay White, Juice Robinson, Ricky Starks, Tony Nese, Ari Daivari, Josh Woods, Penta Phoenix, Bandito, Commander, Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta, Butcher, Blade, Kip Sabian, Brian Cage, Keith Lee, Swerve Strickland, Dustin Rhodes. That's 21 people. Orange Cassidy makes it 22. I don't know why that's going to bother me so much, but it is going to bother me. It's not going to bother me if somebody actually, you know, wins the title, if that person is Jay White. I just don't want to see it happen this way. I don't want to see Orange Cassidy's title run really end on this kind of a goofy thing unless unless it's going to involve Juice Robinson, Jay White, and Ricky Starks where you can have a three-way match open up Dynamite this week with Orange Cassidy actually putting the belt up on the line and transferring it over to either Jay White or Ricky Starks that way. I would prefer Jay White, and I would prefer that Jay White and Ricky Starks' feud continues. Go ahead and get in the rest of the AEW card, as well as everything else when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper BB here with you. Listen to me, chat. I'm pulling a Brian Alvarez right now. Butcher Blade is not one person. They have announced 22 people for this Blackjack Battle Royal. It's over. It's over. They busted. 22. Rest of the show. Wardlow and Christian Cage. They made this to me. This was kind of a, a busted way to, to get to this match. I mean, again, Christian came out, stared down Wardlow twice. We had a promo. And then we had a week where Wardlow and Christian got into it and Luchasaurus and Christian put Wardlow through a ladder and we have a ladder match. All right, <laughs> so I guess, I, I you know, I guess this is going to lead to Wardlow and Luchasaurus as long as Luchasaurus can wrestle on TV with a mask that he won't get sued over. You know, I, I, I'm i guessing that's the way this is going to lead. I mean, could Christian win the title and go to collision with I, I no no it doesn't really make any sense to do that i know wardlow's had this belt a, a bunch of times but you know you're going through another recycling with him with arn anderson you know to me you don't lose to christian cage here and i hope this thing does not go on for too long and i hope it's you know it's very clear who the victor is even if they do move him on with luchasaurus taking christian out of this mix will make me happy Jamie Hayter and Tony Storm, if this match happens, it should make me happy. It's one of the best women's matches that AEW can put on. How injured is Jamie Hayter for real? Uh, we don't know, but we know she's banged up for real. And we know that they've included it as part of the storyline. This storyline will continue, no spoilers, will continue to play itself out tonight on Rampage. For those of you who will be watching that, I got to be honest, I have no idea what time Rampage comes on. I don't know if it's 6.30 p.m. I don't know if it's after midnight again, Eastern time, due to the playoffs and all that stuff that's going on. But bottom line for this match Jamie Hayter should get the victory, you know, even if it's, you know, just something screwy like the uh, the outsiders uh, interference backfiring on them and, and Hayter's able to hit Tony Storm with the Hater 8 or whatever it is. Jamie Hayter should hold on to this title. She should hold on to this title 
frankly, all the way through Wembley, but we'll see what happens. She can lose it at some point along the line, too, if they have something good enough. But as good as this match is, I'd like to see Jamie Hayter hold on to the belt. Chris Jericho and Adam Cole unsanctioned match. I would figure Adam Cole is, is getting the victory here. I don't know what condition Kyle O'Reilly's in, I got to be honest. But, you know, you got this five on three situation here. I guess if you wanted to do something, uh, you know, slightly unexpected, could you could bring back Bobby Fish if he's not asking where the lie is anymore in any place. But, you know, you could bring him back. If Kyle O'Reilly can make an appearance, you could have the Undisputed Era standing, you know, right there and having Sabu at their side if you wanted to. Could Sabu turn on Adam Cole in all of this? Yeah, he absolutely could. He could lay out Roderick Strong and you could have – him and Adam Cole, but I don't think that's going to happen. The reason I don't think that's going to happen is because I believe on Dynamite we're going to get Chris Jericho and Sabu one more time in 2023. Uh, if Sabu can do it, I know it's been a little while since he's wrestled, but if you're going to do a, a smoke and mirrors match, which you're just going to do to make the fans at home happy and to pop the crowd, you could absolutely do it with Chris Jericho and Sabu. So Adam Cole gets the victory here, and Britt Baker probably gets to uh, get a, a couple of shots in on Jericho along the way. FTR against Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. I have enjoyed all of this much more than many other people. That's pretty much because I like Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. Mark Briscoe is the special guest enforcer. They did what they could to kind of sow some doubt in your mind over which way uh, Mark Briscoe would go. I have a feeling at the end of the day, it's going to be Jay Lethal tries to do something shady and, and Mark ends up catching him and FTR ends up getting the victory. Look, you could put the belts on Lethal and Jarrett. I just don't think I would be happy with that. I could say why that could be entertaining and all that sort of stuff. But eh, no, you don't want to do that. You want to continue to build FTR up. And frankly, as I've mentioned, there's a portion of your fan base that just really doesn't want to see Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. MJF against Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, and Sammy Guevara. Again, this started with very noble intentions when all four of those pillars were standing there in the ring with each other and Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, and Sammy Guevara were saying, hey, you know, forget about everything that's happened with all these other people. Look at us. We're supposed to be the guys here, and there's a guy over there in our class that's holding our championship. It looked good on the surface, and it's gone downhill from there. Talked about it pretty much every week since it's gone on. There's almost no way for me. Uh, again, there's no way MJF loses this title. It does not make any sense right now. Could you do it and have Darby Allen, you know, somehow sneak it for a little while? I mean, could you have Sammy Guevara do that? I mean, you could. I just don't think you really accomplish too much uh, by doing that. It's just another roadblock or a little speed bump, frankly. It's not even a roadblock. It's just a speed bump for you know creating a story for story's sake as MJF moves on to his next opponent, which I would believe with the way things are evening out here with Jericho and Cole probably coming to an end that it's going to be MJF and Adam Cole. And then Anarchy in the Arena, the Elite in the Blackpool Combat Club. There's going to be chaos. I would love to hear Natural Born Thriller play, you know, over in Natural Born <laughs> Natural Born Thrillers. Nobody needs to see the Natural Born Thrillers anymore or Above Average Mike Sanders. But the Natural Born Killers song that New Jack used from uh, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube, uh, that, that would be fine. Anything would actually be good. Have it just be ridiculous. Have it be as over the top as you can and that music. Granted, it'll probably cost you a couple of bucks, but, you know, look at what Tony Khan spent on music. Can't be that big of a deal. It can't be more than the Rolling Stones. There's no way. So go ahead and do that. It's going to be just completely ridiculous. I don't know how it ends. It doesn't matter to me how it ends. I just would figure that the elite are going to come out on top. So. That is coming up Sunday night from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. There is one pre-show match, the Hardys and Hook against Ethan Page and the Gun Brothers. If Hardy and Hook win, Matt Hardy owns Page's contract. Sure. Okay. 
Sure. Well, we'll go, we're going to go with that, and we're going to have that happen because unless Isaiah Cassidy is moaning, uh, you know, there's really nothing going on for me in this feud. Uh, Impact Wrestling Under Siege is tonight. Don't want to skip over that. Brian made sure to make me point that out. I have a feeling that Lance Storm has threatened him. Thankfully for Lance, he doesn't have to be in Las Vegas this weekend uh, to deal with Ed and to deal with Ed's wrestling show that's going to be coming up. But instead, Lance is at the Western Fair District Agriplex in London, Ontario. How happy is he that he didn't actually have to cross the border either? But Impact World Champion Steve Macklin faces off against PCO in a no-DQ match. No reason to take the belt off of Steve Macklin right now either. You just put it on him. Uh, his wife, the knockouts champion, Deanna Perrazzo, defends against Jordan Grace. If Grace loses, she can't challenge for the title again while Perrazzo is champion. Um, when it comes to Steve Macklin, I, li- I like Steve Macklin as champion right now for Impact. They don't have a lot of options, and I think he's really one of the better options. But is they need to get to him and Nick Aldis, I think, pretty quickly. Because when you look up and down this card, you look at the six-way number one contenders match, and this is no offense to anybody that's in it, but Eddie Edwards, Moose, Jonathan Gresham, Yuya Uemura, Frankie Kazari, and Alex Shelley. We've seen all these guys before, except for Yuya Uemura, who it doesn't fit to put him in this spot. I know Jonathan Gresham and Steve Macklin would probably be a pretty good match because Jonathan Gresham can work all the way around him and everything. But I really don't want to see that match. I don't want to see Kazarian or Shelly or Edwards, and there's nothing against any of those guys. But it's like, eh. Nick Aldis is facing off against Kenny King in a singles match. Again, you look at that roster, and it's like, to me, the one match you can make without bringing outsiders in is Nick Aldis and Steve Macklin, and they got to be going that direction at some point, but the faster they can get there and try to come up with some other things that, that can get some more eyeballs on the show, it's going to be a good thing. Their knockouts division is good. I mean, they had last night on the show, they had uh, uh, Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly out there just murdering each other in a backstage brawl. And eventually, you know, Masha Slamovich choked her out backstage. But, you know, they have her. They got Trinity in there. It's like, you know, one of the most exciting things they have is their women's division. And unfortunately, they don't have a whole lot else, at least as far as being there on a regular basis. Chris Bay and Ace Austin are really good. They're facing off against Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster. Probably going to be a really good match right there, but... You know, they, they have to import more. I think they need to get some, some new ideas as far as different people to use. I'm not volunteering like a filthy Tom Lawler, but he's an example of somebody that, you know, might be able to freshen some things up, put him in the X division against Trey Miguel, and have Trey Miguel, after facing all of these guys, older guys like Chris Saban, facing high flyers, this, that, now you got to face filthy. Again, I'm just pulling a name out of thin air here to throw out there, but... You know, they got to try to start thinking outside the box because, again, you know, they got Macklin, and that's kind of, again, that's kind of it right now outside of that women's division. But also on the show tonight, the design of Diener, Connor, and Angels will face off against Sammy Callahan, Rich Swan, and a mystery partner. As I mentioned, they have Trinity. She'll be facing off against Giselle Shaw. And on the pre show, Digital media champion Joe Hendry faces off against Dirty Dango. And if you have not seen Dirty Dango's promo, go to Impact's Twitter and watch the video. Very entertaining. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper BB here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Get ready, ASMR kids. Mm hmm. Seriously, this Juneberry Red Bull is good. If you got a Sonic near you, they're doing the slush gimmick. It's fantastic. If you need a break from the cherry lime, this is a perfect one to go with. I like that one. You know what else I like? I like plugging things when Brian's not here. And, uh, you know, here's here's two for, for some unaffiliated. Unaffiliated? Unaffiliated? <laughs> see that? You see that, Producer Daniel? Screwing up how many times a day? We were talking about this during break. But, yeah, there are things that I do that are unaffiliated with the site, and they actually, you know, 
actually enjoy that very, very much. <laughs> and first, make wrestling news part of your day. Everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite professional wrestling review pod. Daily free in between 5 and 15 minutes long. No clickbait, no speculation, no rumors, no paywall. Just the results, the storylines, what moved during Raw when you weren't moving on the couch and fell asleep. What took place overnight in Japan? What's going on when it comes to Nick Khan uh, talking about Amazon and all sorts of other nonsense at these JP Morgan technology meetings? Don't worry. We got you covered with all that sort of stuff. Just the wrestling news. For more information on that, go to the wrestlingnews.com and Wrestling News AV on t- Facebook and Twitter. Also, the Mid Atlantic Championship podcast, which you can find across social media at Mid Atlantic Pod. Free feed for the show is available wherever you find your favorite podcasts and also available on YouTube as well. And if you like what you hear, I encourage you to join the show's Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. If you like reading and learning about wrestling history or just like hearing a good story, it's a great place for you. Patreon.com slash Podcast And... One for the home team, the Admin Mike Big Audio Nightmare, the longest-running Japanese-based professional wrestling show anywhere in the world. It's distributed for free by WrestlingObserver.com and your friends at F4W Online. So go to WrestlingObserver.com or just go wherever you find your favorite podcast, and it's available. We just finished up one last night, and... You will hear us lament the fact that we're doing this show before the finals of the best of the Super Juniors, which are taking place on Sunday. The semifinals were held today. If anybody out there hasn't watched yet, tough. You can turn the show off now or plug your ears, but Titan against Master Watto is your final for the best of the Super Juniors. Both my friend Adam and I predicted that it was going to be El Desperado and Speedball Mike Bailey because how could it not be El Desperado and Speedball Mike Bailey? They were awesome. Not to say that Teton was not. I'm a huge Teton fan. Huge. He's been one of my favorite junior heavyweights for a long time. When Hiromu was still out there, you know, getting it on with Dragon Lee and Dragon Rojo Jr. And you had the caveman in and you had that era uh, of CMLL, you know, going on in, in the mix up with, with New Japan when Hiromu was still Kamiyatachi. You know, I really thought Teton stood out and just one of those things. He can only make it so far, both in Mexico and in Japan, but he's never going to be that guy, except for apparently this year. And a lot of people who are Lucha Libre fans always look at Naito and what happens with him and the learning excursion. And they look at guys like, I mean, Tanahashi, you know, but to a much more, a much bigger extent, Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, completely changed his whole game in Mexico and came back and became a gigantic star. A lot of people wonder, man, you know, what does CML get in return for all of the work that they do, which is seemingly one-sided with New Japan? Looks like we may have our answer. Now, I know the uh, the obvious thing here would be Master Wato wins and we get Master Wato and Hiromu again, but, like, I mean, come on. You got the whole Junior Festival, which is going to be coming up here in Philadelphia soon. You got Rocky Romero with the CMLL title. You got CMLL guys working, you know, again, we saw the caveman, we saw Virus, we, you know, these were guys who had not been on NJPW Strong shows before. Well, guess what? They were on Strong shows in Long Beach last time around. This might be the perfect time to have Teton win the best of the Super Juniors. Never happened before. The furthest, this is as far as any luchador has ever gotten before. Dr. Wagner Jr., in 1998, went to the finals, lost to Koji Kanemoto. That's it. Master Watto has had plenty of shots at that championship. I don't believe if Master Watto loses to Titan that he is on such a tipping point in his career where he's just going to fall off and, and roll down the hill and be gone and dead. It's not going to happen. So Titan getting the victory would be fantastic and i think there's a lot of storylines that, that could play into 
both in Japan, in Mexico, and in the United States. We'll have to see what happens. That show is eventually leading into June 4th, next Sunday, in Osaka at Castle Hall, which is the big New Japan Dominion show that features the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match between Sonata and Yoda Suji returning from CMLL. He has pledged his allegiance to LIJ. LAJ has not returned the favor quite yet. I can't see Sonata losing the belt here, but I can see one hell of a performance by Suji, and I can absolutely see if just five guys get involved that that's how LIJ comes down and gets involved and Hopefully at the end, you know, they're standing together because I think Yoda Suji is the perfect person and has been for a long time. If you saw him in CMLL, you'll know what I'm talking about, that he's the perfect person to join LIJ, especially with Sonata leaving. IWGP U.S. Heavyweight uh, Title Contendership Tournament Final, Lance Archer against Will Ospreay. Sorry, Lance. And he's going to cut some good promos leading into to this thing. He's probably going to kill a man or two. We, we might see him on Dynamite or Rampage do that. Surely we're going to see it in a six-man or an eight-man when he steps foot uh, back into Japan. But uh, he's not going to win this match. It's going to be Will Ospreay and Kenny Omega coming up at Forbidden Door. What's going to be interesting to see is if uh, Kenny Omega shows up there at the end or just sends in a video uh, offering up his words, uh, him attacking attacking Will Ospreay afterwards, that could go a long way. IWGP Tag Team title, uh, Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi against Evil and Yujiro Takahashi. Aussie Open has signed with AEW. That is not the reason they vacated the titles. They vacated them because Mark Davis has gotten arthroscopic knee surgery, and he is still going to be out for a couple of weeks. So I see Goto and Yoshihashi winning the belts just because I don't want to see Evil and Yujiro win them. Uh, the NJ NJPW World Television title match, Zack Sabre Jr. against Jeff Cobb, and the never open weight title match between David Finley and El Phantasmo uh, round out the title matches that are going to be taking place next Sunday. Coming up this Sunday, Stardom, Oda City General Gymnasium on Saturday morning streaming live on pay-per-view begins, as I said, at 3.30 a.m. Eastern time. The show is titled Flashing Champions 2023. I do not believe that any champions will flash during the course of this show. I can't guarantee that, though. The uh, main event is the World of Stardom and Wonder of Stardom Championship match. Tam uh, Nakano, the, uh, the World of Stardom champion, faces off against Mina Shirakawa, the Wonder of Stardom champion. This is probably going to end up a half-hour draw. It, it, it is, unless they have some sort of... And I came up with the idea, and you could hear it on the Big Audio Nightmare, the only way that this would make any sense is if, you know, if... Nakano wins the title and then faces off against Mayu Iwatani for the IWGP World Women's Championship because they have not wrestled since 2021 and Tam has never defeated Mayu. So you could have a storyline if you wanted to go that way. It just seems very early in the year and very early in the game to do something like that. Uh, it's also too early in the game for Mina Shirakawa to lose, though. Certainly way too early for her to actually carry the company with the World of Stardom title. But, you know, her losing this match doesn't really make any sense. You know, they've been building her up, giving her a lot of credibility. She's looked much, much better in the ring. I mean, she has improved infinitely. She is leading her Club Venus stable, which has actually got some traction going on. So her actually finishing with a half-hour draw in this match is probably going to be considered a big victory there. You may not want to hear that if you're ordering the pay-per-view, but I have a feeling you're, you you got a good shot of ending in a draw. The Artist of Stardom title, the six-woman title match, uh, is Kyrie Natsupoi and Sayori Anyo against Julia May Sakurai and Thekla. I'm a big fan of DDM. I'm a big fan of Julia, but I don't see them winning this. Uh, in fact, I see all of the titles kind of remaining where they are because the high-speed title with Azumi, she's facing off against Saki Kashima and Fuka Gendef, just no, <laughs> it's, Azumi's going to win that. And then the tag team titles, Mariah and Ami Sore against Natsuko Tora and Momo Watanabe. 
I don't know who the duo is that is finally going to beat Mariah and Ami Sore. They just won the belts. They won them on the count out from seven up. They had their title match. I'm hoping this one is is decent here that they have with uh, with a Wado tie, but. Uh, you know, Mariah and Sore, the way they won the belts, just I don't know exactly what the plan is going to be for them, but uh, uh, I'm not bullish on the title reign, but I don't think it's going to be ending to, uh, coming up on Saturday. So, again, that's that show out of the way. Uh, what have we not talked about yet? Oh, yeah, WWE and Battleground and Night of Champions. Go with Night of Champions first from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Undisputed WWE World Tag Team title. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens against Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. There are people that are hyping themselves up and coming up with the idea that Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa will win the titles. Nah. Nah. This is the perfect chance for Sami Zayn who's returning to Saudi Arabia after five years of not being allowed there because of politics that were out of his control and he gets to go there and he got a great reaction from what i heard at the press conference today he was the final man introduced he got a, a long chant there so him getting the victory over roman reigns and i know i know for some of you out there it's just going to be hollow it's going to be hollow because you thought Sami Zayn should defeat Roman Reigns. It's going to be hollow because you're sick of Roman Reigns and you know that even if Sami and Kevin win, that the bloodline storyline is still going to dominate you know, the, the world of WWE. But I think Sami Zayn gets the victory over Roman Reigns here. Is it because of the Usos? Interference backfiring is because something happens between Solo Sokoa and, and Roman Reigns. Is it a new twist to the story where... Sami Zayn just pins Roman Reigns cleanly, which then leads to the Usos and Solo wondering about Roman. There's a lot of things you can do here. I'm going to look in the chat and see that DJ Convoy doesn't like any of those things, but that's okay because he subscribed to the Patreon of the Mid-Atlantic Championship podcast. But other matches on the show, Cody Rhodes officially going into the match with a worked broken arm. They announced that at the press conference, facing off against Brock Lesnar. I think Brock Lesnar gets the victory here, and we end up having a third match between the two. Final for the new WWE Raw World title, Seth Rollins against AJ Styles. I think Seth Rollins is going to pull out the victory here. Intercontinental title, Gunther goes over Mustafa Ali. Becky Lynch over Trish Stratus. I'm going to go with Asuka over Bianca Belair. I'm doing that. And Rhea Ripley defeats Natalia. Those are my predictions. Talk about NXT when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. Show. Mike Center may be here, Wrestling Observer Live. Obviously, no Brian Alvarez because Brian Alvarez is in Las Vegas, Nevada. And if, ever, if you're out there right now, if you're traveling out there to be a part of the F4W uh, convention, just want to say safe travels. If you're going to any of these shows, there are shows all over different area codes. And wherever you're going, I hope you stay safe out there. If you're going to Lowell, Massachusetts, then, well, that means you're going to NXT Battleground at the Sanga Center. And Carmelo Hayes against Braun Breaker. I think Carmelo Hayes retains the championship. There is a chance, though, with the way things have been going with Trick Williams, where, eh, man, maybe, maybe Trick has gotten to a little bit somehow. But I'll say Carmelo Hayes holds on to it for right now. I don't know what that means for Braun Breaker, though. I'd like to see him up on the main roster sooner rather than later, but we'll see. Tiffany Stratton, Lyra Valkyria. Lyra, just like Cody, uh, just like Jamie Hayter, going into this match with an injury, much like Cody and unlike Jamie, this is a worked knee injury suffered at the hands of Cora Jade. I think that's one of the excuses uh, that uh, why Tiffany Stratton wins. The other reason is because Tiffany Stratton should win. NXT Heritage Cup, Noam Dar against Dragon Lee. Hey, Dragon Lee, you know, getting a victory here won't hurt my feelings at all with Dar trying to chase and get his Heritage Cup back. Wes Lee, I think, retains over Tyler Bate and Joe Gacy if you wanted to change the title right now because Wes Lee has had it for a while. You could. In that case, I'd say put it on Joe Gacy. Last man standing, Ilya Dragunov and Dijak, the winner, the fans. NXT Tag Team title, Gallus against the Creed Brothers. Dude's going to be thrown around, and I think Gallus comes out with the victory. And I think that is all of the shows. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, you Lucha fans. The La Copa Junior VIP Cup will be decided during tonight's CMLL weekly pay-per-view from their home arena of uh, Arena Mexico. Soberano Junior against Dragon Rojo Junior is going to be the final there. So I'll go with Soberano Junior because, you know, why not? And uh, as I mentioned, everybody, not here on Monday. We'll talk to you again Tuesday. And as we usually say at the end of this thing, we'll talk to you again after a while.